This is not a video that I expected to make. Uh, to be honest, I didn't really think to compare these two microphones because I, I don't know why. I just feel that they were completely different. But then I look back, I, I'm redoing a lot of my videos. I'm redoing the Rode Pod mic. I'm redoing the AT2020. I'm even redoing the comparison between the AT2020 and the Rode Pod mic, which will be out soon. Now, that doesn't mean that you need to keep these two in separate categories because the application for these microphones could blend together for podcasting, for uh, streaming and stuff like that. Simple things like that for spoken word and getting a good vocal performance out of a microphone that doesn't cost crazy amounts of money. The other reason why you would consider these two being on the same playing field is because of their price. You got $130 compared to about $100. With the pop filter here, you're looking at like $150 or $140, depending on the day. So they're roughly around the same price in the same market for the same people. Now, it's totally up to you what you like better. Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel. I'm Justin, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the PD-70, the AT2020, and see not necessarily which one is better, but which one fits your production and your content better but before we get started if you have any questions comments or anything whatsoever please leave them down in the comments section down below i'll be happy to answer any questions you guys have about content gear microphones these ones in particular or anything whatsoever just please keep it positive down in the comments uh, i love having conversations with you guys so it's it's fun to uh talk about this stuff and if you want to ask me more directly, I'm starting streaming on Wednesday and Saturday now. Keep an eye out for that. I do about an hour on this channel doing dot to dot art, a uh, little artsy thing and listening to music and just hanging out with you guys, answering questions, all that stuff. Then I switch over to Twitch where I play video games and uh, hang out and do the same thing just with video games. And of course, if you found this video helpful, entertaining or anything whatsoever, please leave a like and consider subscribing. So the first thing I'm going to get into is the build of these two budget microphones. And they're both built pretty simply and very sturdy. Uh, so the look on them is pretty straightforward, black design, nothing crazy, a logo on the PD-70, and some writing and everything and the standard microphone look for the AT2020. So... As far as aesthetically, it's it's pretty pleasing, at least in my opinion, because it's simple. It's nothing too crazy. They didn't try to do too much. Now, as far as feeling them, they're fully metal, a little hardened plastic here and there, but for the most part, they're metal. The mesh grills on both of them are very sturdy, and I've never had a problem with them. I've had the AT2020 for about four years. I've had the PD-70 for a couple months now and never had a problem. Now, the thing that really stands out between them, other than the fact that one's a condenser and one's a dynamic, is the weight. And for the most part, your condenser microphones are usually lighter than your dynamic microphones. But in this case, it's pretty significant. And you probably can imagine, if you've seen my videos on the PD-70 and the Rode Pod mic, dynamic microphones are notoriously known for being heavy. So speaking of heavy, let's talk about the dimensions and the weight of the PD-70, which is a heavy boy. It really is heavy. Uh, not as heavy as its competitor, the pod mic, but significantly heavier than the AT2020. So we have a dimension of 6.25 inches by 2.5 inches, which is also equivalent to 15.9 centimeters by 6.4 centimeters, if you're international and pretty much anywhere other than America and a couple of the countries. Then we have the weight being 1.87 pounds, which is equivalent to 29.9 ounces or 848 grams. And that is pretty heavy, I gotta admit. And for a microphone that is that heavy, uh, I, I said this in my PD-70 and I said this in the PD-70 versus the pod mic video, most of that weight is behind the pop filter and the capsule and everything in front of it doesn't really hold much weight. The rest of it is in the back, so it's back heavy. Doesn't really affect it too much, but if you are holding it, you notice the, um, the weight differential from front to back. 
Now moving on to the AT2020, uh, it's significantly lighter. Being a condenser microphone, it usually is going to be a lighter microphone. So the AT2020 is weighing in around 12.1 ounces or 345 grams, which is about 500 grams lighter than the PD70. And that makes sense. I mean, it's not supposed to be heavy. Uh, the components put together in a condenser microphone are much different than a dynamic. And if you've seen my uh, condenser microphone and dynamic microphone breakdowns, you notice that the biggest part of the dynamic microphone in construction is the fact that it has a voice coil and it has a magnet in there, which gives it a lot of weight. Uh, it doesn't require electricity to run, but it uses that magnet and that voice coil to transfer audible noise or audio to an electrical signal through reverberation of a diaphragm and goes through it. Same concept over here on the AT2020, but it uses more finesse and more uh, electrical components, meaning that the 48 volts of phantom power on the AT2020 or a condenser microphone, there's a back plate and then there's the diaphragm and then that energizes it and creates an energy field which reverberates back and forth. There's no voice coil, there's no magnet, so that's it. Now moving on to the dimensions of the AT2020, we have it measuring up as 162 millimeters, which is also 6.38 inches long, and 52 millimeters, which is also 2.05 inches, the maximum body diameter. Now all these dimensions and all these weights are just with the microphones and the PD70 also has its yoke mount, its half yoke mount. Uh, but the AT2020, as far as those dimensions are concerned, it doesn't include a shock mount. Okay, so now that we got all the build and the dimensions out of the way, let's talk about the specs and what really matters with these microphones when you're buying them, and that means the sound. So since we started off with the PD70 before, let's start off with the AT2020, just to be fair. So the AT2020 is a cardioid polar pattern microphone, meaning that it picks everything up from the front, rejects the sides, rejects the back, and the further away from the front you get, the more rejected it is. Pretty standard, very common polar pattern for microphones. It's also a condenser microphone, which requires 48 volts of phantom power. The next couple things I'm going to just roll off a little bit. They're very important, but I'm not going to go too in depth with them. So if you want an explanation of them down in the comments, just ask me about them. So we have a sensitivity of negative 37 decibels, an impedance of 100 ohms, and a max SPL of 144 decibels. Now, as we move over to the PD70, it's a dynamic microphone, pretty standard dynamic microphone broadcast style so as far as the polar pattern it's just like the at 2020 cardioid polar pattern picks up in the front rejects the back a little bit on the side so just like the at 2020 let's roll off some of these specs so we have a max spl of 135 decibels a output impedance of 350 ohms and a sensitivity of negative 56 decibels so as far as those specs are concerned the only thing you're really going to notice if you're just a person using a microphone and not really getting too in depth with the spe the specs or the tech. Uh, the only thing you're really going to notice is the gain on the PD70 is going to be higher. So you're going to have to raise that up a little bit. Maybe consider getting a FET head or a cloud lifter. You don't need it. Most uh, preamps are good enough for this microphone. But to take some pressure off of your preamp if you have a lower budget recorder or audio interface maybe consider getting it you could get a fed head i have a fed head for a dynamic microphone for 100 bucks the last thing i'm going to get into with the specs is the frequency response curve let's compare the two and see if you notice the difference uh on a chart uh with representation of audio like comparing the audio you hear to the chart that you can see so as you can see here, we got the AT2020 and the PD70 frequency response curves. And the first thing that comes out and stands out is the roll off on the PD70 that's natural to the frequency response. And I've said this also, it's not a big deal because you can roll off that stuff in post anyway. 
Uh, some people like to do it in the recording, but you can still do it in post. On the other hand, the AT2020 is fairly flat, and then it dips right around that 80 hertz. So you kind of got some, some tuning there that they did. Maybe they decided to say, oh, this frequency is where we want to reduce that bass or that low end, uh, but it doesn't have a roll off. Like I said, not a big deal and not a huge uh, determining factor, at least in my opinion. Now, as we move through the midsection, there's not much to be said because both of these are fairly flat. If you were to compare the two, I'd say that the AT2020 is more flat than the PD70. A little bumpy here and there, but they're roughly the same midsection, which is very good and they're very smooth. Now, as we move into the highs, the mid highs and the high highs, you notice that the AT2020 has a dip before it goes into the highs. And it's not a big deal, but compared to the PD70, it just rises right up and gives you more of a presence boost in those high ends. This is also something that they like to do with dynamic microphones, especially if it's a broadcast style. Because they lack sensitivity, they try to boost those high ends a little bit more. With the AT2020, it has more sensitivity, so you don't necessarily have to boost those that much because it's natural to the tone of the microphone. Now, on the treble, they're pretty similar, except for the simple fact that the PD70 is boosted another 5 decibels. But that makes sense. If you compare the sensitivities, it's significant. The PD70 is 20 decibels lower in sensitivity. So that makes sense that they would boost up some of those frequencies a lot more than you would in a condenser microphone because the sound is much lower naturally to the microphone. Makes sense. Condenser, dynamic. Biggest difference, sensitivity and the ruggedness. Uh, of course, that does reflect in the tone, but that's just something to consider when you're buying these microphones. I, I'm going to push this to you guys. It's not a matter of which one's better. It's a matter of what tone you like more. Okay, so now that we got all that stuff out of the way, we're going to, we did some tests in here. You've heard how it is in my studio area, a mildly treated room. Now we're going to get into an untreated room and in the booth. And we're going to do a lot more booth stuff this month and hopefully stuff in the future. I really enjoy just recording in a controlled environment. It, it's a, aesthetically pleasing because don't have all these distractions around. And it's also audibly pleasing because there's less noise. So maybe that just says a lot about me trying to be a hermit. I'd like to think maybe I'm like Obi-Wan Kenobi or Yoda. But then again, things were kind of bleak for them in the end. Regardless, let's get into the other tests. <laughs> okay, so we have the AT2020 and the Personas PD70 in that untreated room that I have shown a couple of times. Uh, the dimensions are 20 by 12 in feet. And this is going to be what you're going to experience. Uh, it's, I think it's an eight foot ceiling, roughly uh, seven to eight feet. And the thing that I noticed with the AT2020 is, especially when it comes to the difference between dynamic and condenser, they're uh, less usable in these scenarios, mostly because they're more sensitive than a dynamic microphone. And I would not recommend using these microphones if you have this setting. And it's, it's very difficult to do things when you're not in possession of a place to get good audio recording. And it's very difficult to have content be made when you don't understand certain things are affecting your content even though you have no control over it. And these two microphones are budget microphones, that's for sure. And there's nothing you can say or do about it that will change them. Uh, for their value, for their $130 and $100 value, or with the pop filter, it's roughly around the same price, it, you're getting a lot out of it. And sometimes you have to baby these things, and you have to keep a good mindset about it. And work a little bit harder to get better content. I say this in a couple of videos that a lot of times your content is better because you have to work harder 
in the sense that you're restricted. If you're restricted in certain ways, you get creative and you learn different ways to get around not having perfect gear. So next up, we're going to be doing some silence tests and just I'm going to be quiet for a little while and see how these two things compare to each other with silence and just natural sound of the microphones. All right, so these microphones are roughly around the same dB and are going to be brought to the same decibels roughly between 18 and negative 6, negative 6 and negative 18. I try to go in that range. I try to narrow it down closer to 12. You try to get to 12 as close as you can. Uh, so you got some headroom and then it's not too quiet. Uh, I'm, of course, recording into a 32-bit float file, so it's not that big of a deal. But what you're going to notice is that the AT2020 is more sensitive than the PD70, just by nature of the style of microphone it is. But they also are both cardioid polar patterns, so that is not a factor that comes into this. The type of microphone is what's coming into play in that test. Now, if I clap a couple of times, like... You probably noticed some reflections off the walls. You probably noticed reflections off the glass and maybe some other things that might ring a little bit. Uh, there's an old clock there that might be ringing if I was to clap, like if I would do it again. That might be glass that's uh, ringing. So that's some situation that you may be coming into. Uh, chances are you're not be clapping like that, or at least not uh, a lot to make it obnoxious so that's just a little like, extreme example of what you're going to deal with all right so we're in the booth with the presonus pd70 and the at2020 uh, as i was saying before these two microphones are different sounds and not necessarily one better than the other but one can be more fitting to what you're looking for and a sound that you may be more partial to uh, as far as your content is concerned uh, if you're going to be using this in a booth, possibly voiceover work, possibly um, working with uh, singing or working with some type of performance that requires a vocal performance, both these microphones are good options. And you could say that about a lot of microphones, especially lower budget microphones in a booth setting because you're not... Uh, subject to a lot of outside noise and you're not subject to uh, peripherals that could hamper the progress of recording your audio and making the environment as audio friendly as possible will make a lower budget microphone that much better. All right, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to do a quick 30 second or so uh, silence test so that you understand what this microphone has to offer in a more very treated room because uh, there are still noises that could, pro could probably arise, uh, natural noises from the electronics and uh, this isn't a perfect booth but it's certainly better than most scenarios you're going to encounter. All right, so you probably noticed some walking upstairs and uh, the creaky floor that I've dealt with for many, many months and uh, a couple years now with being down here. It's one of those things that you just got to deal with, and it's not um, a perfect scenario, but it's significantly better than a lot of scenarios you may encounter uh, if you're in your bedroom or something where there is uh, noise in the adjacent rooms, then you're going to have to deal with that. But you try your best to control the environment as much as you can and if you haven't seen it my booth video hundred dollar roughly booth uh this is a good option for people who can't get their uh room brought to a good noise floor and 
it's not going to be perfect. But for the price and for the uh, functionality of it in a small space, it, it does a really good job. And I feel like this is the most uh, success I've had with a sound booth in the sense that it's not a monstrosity and also it's fairly cheap. I built a booth before. I built a booth out of wood and foam and stuff like that. That place was a fortress. But the problem is it costs like four or five hundred bucks to build, not including labor. And it was just a lot of wood, a lot of material, a lot of time. And of course, I didn't pay for the whole thing. I built it for a movie uh, so that we could do ADR. But it, it was one of those things that it it did its job, but for the price, you got to consider the price with these things, like these microphones. You got to consider the price with these microphones because uh, you're you're starting out. You're not buying these if you're professional. You're not buying these if you're in a professional studio. You're buying these if you're at home and you're trying to do things cheap and you're trying to learn. These microphones are perfect for people who want to learn and learn how to use EQ, learn how to optimize the most out of your gear the, the the smaller budget and the lower budget things are made for that they're they're not supposed to be perfect they're supposed to be they have their flaws they're supposed to have flaws and what you do with those flaws is a representation of how skilled you are as a content creator okay so this might look a little bit different i forgot to do an outro uh it was very uh strange doing the editing for this video and not doing an outro so thank you all for watching hope you all enjoyed it if you liked that video please hit the like button down below and consider subscribing for more videos like this and more videos that are uh, going to be coming out in the future on these microphones the pod mic is going to be back the uh at2020 the pd70 uh at the end of the month february I will have all three of these microphones in a big showdown for budget broadcast or budget microphones. Uh, just something to look forward to. I have some new microphones that I am going to be reviewing in March. Uh, I have just a little teaser here. I have an AT2035 and a Deity S Mic 2. The S Mic 2 is a, a friend's friend of mine's. Uh, he wanted to get a uh cheaper option for a shotgun just when he didn't have access to my gear and my uh expertise so uh i did some research for him and i thought that the s mic 2 was a better option than some of the other ones within that range but i will be doing a video comparing it to the 416 the octava and doing all three of them together maybe even some foley work a lot of stuff planned i said this in a couple of videos i got stuff planned through april and maybe even may if i really think about it so be ready we got we got tons of videos coming out and if you subscribe you'll know exactly when i'm not going anywhere anytime soon because i haven't been vaccinated but once once I'm vaccinated, the world will be a different place and hopefully it'll be a better place once I'm out of the caves of the studio. And of course, if you have any questions, comments, please leave them down below. Please just be positive, just be constructive. That's all I ask. And uh, you could ask me about these microphones, anything whatsoever. Uh, make sure it's gear related. I, I could talk about other things, but please just try to keep it gear related and uh, mic related. Uh, if you have anything other than that, you could hop into my stream. I stream on uh, Wednesdays and Saturdays, uh, probably sometime in the afternoon. If you keep uh, an eye on it, I usually post the times. Um, and uh, I do about an hour on this channel doing dot to dot art and talk to you guys, listen to music. Stream Beats is my music of choice of copyright free music so you don't get in trouble. And uh, I switch over to Twitch after that to play some video games. Uh, a bunch of things coming up. Uh, finishing up Assassin's Creed Syndicate. And I'm going to be playing Little Nightmares. I might be getting Little Nightmares 2. I'm a little upset that they don't have the limited edition available in America yet. But maybe I might get it. Maybe I won't. I'm going to get it eventually. I just don't know if I'm going to get the digital version first and then maybe buy the limited edition when it's available here. We'll see. We'll see what happens. And that all being said, be safe, be kind, and I'll see you in the next video. Evie, don't, don't do me like that. Don't don't give the, the twerking. Don't be twerking on Big Ben. Stop twerking on Big Ben! Stop!
Stop it! Good God, girl. I'm all about if you got it, shake it, but come on, man. 